In this video, we're going to take a look at how to use organizations and teams in Docker Cloud to share and collaborate on work. These features are currently in preview. So over here in Docker Cloud, I'm already logged in with my Docker ID. Now, the first thing I want to do is create a new organization. So I just come up here to my user account and choose it from the drop down list. All right, I need to give it a name. I think uh, Cloud Phoenix is a good name. Okay, now it wants some credit card info. This is for things like private repositories and paying for nodes. So let me just add that in. Okay, now see how it's logging me into the Cloud Phoenix organization. So up at the top here, we can see Cloud Phoenix and I can skip back to my normal user account if I want to. In fact, I could have converted my user account into an org if I wanted, but I didn't want to do that. Anyway, let's go ahead and create a new repository for the organization. We'll call this one FE Blue for front end blue. And I want to make it private. Ah, okay. Private repos are a paid for service. So let's go and add some. I'll just go with five for now. Yep, subscribe. Okay, that looks good. Back up to repositories here. Right. Now we can make it private and we're looking good. This here is on your repository. Right. Let's skip over here to teams. Now see how there's just the owners team right now and how if we click it, I'm the only member. Well, I tell you what, I suppose while we're here, let's add Mia as another owner. So I just fill in her Docker ID here and that's it. She's going to get an email telling her and we're all good. It's always a good idea to have more than one owner. But well, let's come back down here to Teams again, and this time we'll create a new one. Let's call it Blue. Give it a bit of a description here. Okay, now it's here in Teams where we manage permissions and stuff. So things like if we want to manage access to repositories or nodes or apps and the likes. Well, we do it here through Teams. So tell you what, let's add some members. Okay, that's our team with a couple of members. Now, let's assume that the blue team here are the guys responsible for end-to-end -end ownership of blue builds. So, from development to production. Well, up here we want to give them read-write access to runtime stuff like nodes and containers. And then down here we'll give them read-write on the FE blue repo that we just created. Alright, so looking at that, members of this blue team are going to have read-write access to build time and runtime assets. Now, we can obviously create more teams and more repos and assign out different permission sets, but that's the basics of how easy it is. One last thing though, if we look at the organization's cloud settings here, this is where we can do things like link the organization to a cloud provider, so we can link to any of these providers on the list here so that we can deploy to them. We can also link to source code providers, we can update our billing, but down here at the very bottom, this is where we can see the organization's quotas on things like the number of containers and nodes it can have. But that's organizations, currently in preview, but a powerful way to share and collaborate as teams with strong access control mechanisms. For more information, come and visit us at www.docker.com slash products slash docker dash cloud.